naturally going to attract natural insects, native insects. When you bring in those native insects, those birds are probably naturally going to come in. So you're going to get a wider diversity of species coming in because of the food or other resources that you provide. Um, generally, probably a little bit more cost effective than feed because those plants, as long as those plants have a little bit of water, they're going to naturally just produce their own food over time. Um, but the downside to that is that there is going to be some maintenance there because you have plants. You're going to have to keep them trimmed. Maybe if you go native, uh, you know, with native plants, you know, during drought, you don't have to water them, but giving them a little bit of water every now and again just help to keep them alive. Um, obviously, plants can die. Um, those seasonal limitations. So plants are only going to produce flowers or fruit or nuts or other uh, parts that animals are going to eat at certain times of year. So the wildlife is only going to come in if that source is available, especially during years of drought. Those plants may still produce flowers or fruit. It just may not be a whole lot. So with viewing areas, I very much recommend doing kind of like a blend. And there are ways, I have seen properties that are able to put in artificial water sources, food sources, and they do a really good job of making it look like it's not artificial. So there are ways to do it. And this is where also, if this is something you wanna do, go, go spend a little bit of money, go view some of these places, visit some of these places to get an idea of what they're doing. You don't have to copy it exactly but you can get some ideas. So now we're gonna dive into those different resources. So food requirements. So every animal, every species is going to have different food requirements. This is, this is nothing new. We know that some animals eat plants, some animals eat other animals. So it's just a matter of figuring out what animals you wanna attract and what food they require to attract them. And birds are a great example of this. Uh, hummingbirds, they only eat nectar. So putting out nectar, Orioles, they like to eat, uh, they'll come into oranges and grape jelly. Uh, certain birds only eat certain types of seeds. So goldfinches, this uh, little black and yellow guy up at the top, American goldfinch, he only comes into um, thistle or niger seed, which are these little itty bitty little seeds. So if you want to attract certain types of birds, certain types of seeds, and just figuring out what they need. Okay, water requirements. Now, my first question to y'all is, do, does, do all living things require water? Yes. Now, the next question is, what type of water do they need? And there are three different types of water on the landscape. You have standing or free form water, which are your lakes, your rivers, your puddles, standing water. That's a pretty easy one. You have preformed water, which is the water that resides within plants and other animals. So in other words, to get that preformed water, that animal has to consume that resource, to consume the plant, consume the animal. And the last one, which is not super common, is metabolic. So y'all are probably wondering, you're like, okay, I get the standing, I get the preformed, why is there a little kangaroo rat? These guys, actually, there's not too many animals out there, but kangaroo rats actually have the ability to just by their natural body processes, create their own water. So they don't actually eat anything that gives them water. They really don't drink water. It's not that they won't take advantage of it, but they can make their own water. So that next question is, does my target species need standing water? It's a whole nother question. And it sometimes depends upon where they are in their life stage. Quail are a great example of this. Quail chicks, they require standing water. They need a puddle, they need some sort of water source on the ground. The adults, however, can actually get uh, most of their, actually just about all their water is from uh, preformed water, so the insects that they eat. Um, the plant material that they eat. That's where they get a large majority of their food, or excuse me, water. <clears throat> okay, 
shelter requirements. So this is going to vary from time of year to different life stages and what they require. So you can do, um, shelter can fall under reproduction, uh, predator evasion, food storage, or um, thermoregulation or protection from the elements. So obviously for birds, that's a big one. So putting up bird boxes. Now obviously they're only gonna use them during certain times a year. Bluebirds are only gonna use it whenever they're building a nest, whenever they're trying to raise young. So they're not gonna need it necessarily, you know, nine of the 12 months, but when they need that bluebird box, they need that bluebird box. Escaping predators. And this again is gonna look different depending upon the species. The amount of cover that a white tail fawn needs to evade predators is gonna look different than what a quail needs to escape predators. Um, for food, storing food. So for a squirrel, you know, their uh, food storage can look like the hood of somebody's, you know, dilapidated old car. Uh, for an acorn woodpecker, it can look like a dead tree that they drill holes in and shove their little acorns in and come back and get it when they're hungry. Uh, the last one, protection of the elements. This is one that we're able to relate to pretty easily. When it's hot outside, you want shade. When it's rainy or cold or windy, you just want something that's going to protect you from that wind, from that cold, from that rain, so you're not cold anymore. So this is just simply figuring out, again, what each species requires and what that food, water, or shelter looks like for that specific species. Okay, just a couple of considerations that I'm gonna run through real quick is, so you are, you know, if you're opening up your property for ecotourism, um, overcrowding, you know, I kind of touched on this with over tourism, overcrowding, you know, it, it's kind of almost a good problem to have because it means you have people that want to come to your property. But if you get too many people on your property trying to enjoy your resource, it almost becomes counterproductive to what you're trying to do. With too many people, it can cause a lot of problems. You can disturb the wildlife a little bit more, which it's one of the things. You're going to disturb wildlife if you're trying to watch it, but you wanna try and minimize that. So having too many people disturb the wildlife, it could destroy that resource if you have too many people. And we know how people are. We've all watched the news with people just touching things that they shouldn't, with, you know, just doing things that they just shouldn't do. Um, you know, habitat destruction, this kind of goes along with overcrowding also, you know, if you are building facilities, you are gonna have to lose a little bit of habitat in order to build those facilities. It's just part of it that goes along with it. It's just making sure that you build those facilities so that they don't, they make as little of an impact as possible. Um, vehicles on your property. This is probably a big one because, you know, people gonna come into your property. There's always that potential for people, again, doing dumb human things speeding through your property, deciding that they have access to your property. I paid good money to be on this property. Well, you know what? I can do whatever I want. If I want to go off-roading, I can go off-roading. So it's trying to mitigate some of those generally, like I said, it's, it's people just trying to do your best to, I hate to say control because we can never control people, but doing your best to making sure that people know why they're here, why you've opened your property, that this is, um, I'm opening it so y'all can enjoy it. So try not to ruin it for the rest of us. Um, and the last one is, there is always that potential for introduction of exotic plants and animals. You have people coming in from all over the place and they're not necessarily going to introduce these plants or animals intentionally. They come in with a pair of pants or a pair of shoes or their dog, and plants get stuck. Sometimes animals get stuck. So there is, it's, it's probably, of these, it's probably the least of your concern, but there is, there is always that potential that they could bring in something that you don't necessarily want. And my last slide is, you know, we've already kind of touched on this. We had, uh, you know, NRCS has spoken on their stuff. Uh, our, uh, the wildlife and ag uh, evaluation 
kind of talked on that a little bit already. There are so many financial assistance programs out there, and it's not necessarily to help you build a wildlife blind, but to do habitat projects, especially if you have that fixer up property that you want to make habitat better so you can have a greater bird, excuse me, bird or mammal diversity on your property. You know, you don't have to go at it alone, especially because it can, it can be financially overwhelming and daunting. So um, just speaking with TPWD, speaking with your county extension agent, NRCS, about financial assistance programs, I very much recommend it. So with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, this is my contact info. I do also, I did also remember to bring my business cards if y'all want a souvenir to go home with. Um, so yeah, y'all can reach me whenever. Um, but yeah, I'll be happy to take any questions. Um, when y'all, if y'all, once y'all finish taking pictures of this slide, I'll go to the literature, my literature cited slide. So y'all can, um, if you want to take pictures and read these later. Um, I did send Ashley my presentation. So y'all are more than welcome to print that off and have it on hand. But yeah, with that, that that's all I have for y'all. So I'm not standing between you and a, a, a big lunch now, or a nap maybe. Yeah, nap. Um, I did just want to say that I'm really excited to see the 